All right, so what I got behind me is Taxodium Dystecum. Taxodium Dystecum, also known as the bald cypress. So the bald cypress, the Taxodium, Taxodium actually means you like. Uh, Taxus is the genus for the, for the use. Taxodium uh, means you like. Dystecum, the specific epithet, is uh, actually means uh, two ranked. And that is, I think it's because of the, uh, the, the leaves, which we'll look at here in a minute. So the, the bald cypress oftentimes, usually, almost always, grows in swamps, really wet areas. However, it's been planted in drier areas and it does succeed. We're up here in Northwest Indiana. The taxodiums that, that are around us have been planted and, uh, and it's been said that, you know, we should be planting these for climate change. I'll do a video sometimes about how ridiculous that idea is, but that isn't why what we're talking about today. Uh, we have seen some, ta the taxodium, the bald cypress aren't supposed to reproduce in this cold. I've seen some saplings around the Indiana Dunes area where we're filming this right now. So anyway, the, the bald cypresses, they're gonna have these big round bases and then oftentimes the young ones grow up in this really cool uh, columnar type shape, but then as they get older, they kind of get flat topped and more just kind of older looking, if you know what I mean. So let's take a look at some other cool features up close of this cool tree. So one thing that's really indicative of, of the bald cypress and something that a lot of people think about when we talk about bald cypresses are these knees. And we're not really sure why they, they have these protrusion, these knee-like structures well, uh, that, that are coming out of the ground. Some, some people think it's uh, because of uh, aeration. And then they also have these big buttresses, these big buttresses coming out uh, that I think really help its stability. I mean, if you think about it in these really wet uh, structures, it can really help stabilize it within within its habitat and, and another thing to note is that it's deciduous it's deciduous which means that the the leaves actually fall off the leaves fall off and curious thing to this and we'll see this in a bit and there's a term that we're going to talk about that that represents this but it's not just the leaves that fall out but it's these determinate branches that fall off as well super cool now on taxodiums, they have, uh, their leaves are alternate. So one of these is a branch. This is what's called a determinate branch, a determinate branch. And uh, the leaves are these little, these, this right here is a leaf, right? And each one of these leaves is alternate. It's alternately arranged. One thing to note, and you can see it right here with this, with this branch, these, these, bra these side branches, again, are called determinate branches. And it's a, you know, the taxodium's a deciduous tree, which means that its leaves fall, right? Uh, so you can see here all the leaves on the, on the ground. I don't know if it's, there we go, see that. So it's called cladoptosis. Cladoptosis, that's a word that, you know, you might have to practice if you want to put that in your vocabulary. So what does it mean to be cladoptosic? I can't even say it and I want you to learn it. What? It means that instead, of, as you can see here, instead of just, just the, the leaves falling, the whole branch falls off. So these determinate branches here, these determinate branches fall off. See, look at that. And then they, they fall. And as you can see here, you can see, look at that right there. You can see that some of them are still holding on, but, uh, so here, uh, here we have the cones, and uh, this is the female cone. Uh, also, they call it the seed cone. Uh, the male cones they call the pollen cones, because, you know, that's the boy parts. These are the girl cones. Um, and these are gonna be globose round. When they start out, they're kind of purplish green. Uh, they dry kind of brown, thin seeded, thin walled, thin walled. And then let's take a look here at these seeds. So here are the seeds we just cracked one open and each one of these seeds is three ranked so it's three sided here you can see there we go we got two seeds there uh, on that scale but you can see it's three sided can you see that there it's three sided that's what the seeds look like nothing special nothing to write home about but there we go so here are the boys so these are the uh the pollen cones the boy cones and uh these they're not even open right now so what you see here what's going to happen What's going to happen here is that they're going to uh, they're going to overwinter like this and then open up. They're going to open up in the uh, in the old spring. So again, the range is more south. Uh, it's the you know south southeastern and southern United States. It it really doesn't go 
I think it barely gets into Oklahoma. I think there's a couple records of it in Oklahoma. Gets down into Texas, goes up and in, barely into Missouri, and and then just kind of peters out once it gets up into the bottom of Illinois and um, in Indiana. So I just wanted to mention that uh, that the cypress, the bald cypress, um, have had a history of being cut down to the point where uh, Charles Deem wrote in his 1940, I think it was his 1940 book, or maybe his Trees of Indiana, I don't remember which one, but he wrote that there, were, there, that there was no objections to judicious cutting, but an attempt to annihilate a species without sufficient cause seems a tragedy. And that's a quote, I wrote it down here, because I thought that was just so, so important. In Knox County, which is a county in, in southwestern uh, Indiana, um, he wrote that there was an estimated 20,000 acres of, uh, of cypress swamp down there, and it just annihilated. It's just practically all been cut, um, it's been drained, and now mostly all under cultivation. And we still see this, you know, I, I mean, this is obviously not its native range, so it's, it's not supposed to grow here, and here it is. But you know, to think 20,000 acres is just, it's just mind boggling. <laughs> So excited to uh, tell you about cladoptosis that I forgot to tell you. Like one of the main differences here between Taxodium disticum, which is this, the bald cypress, and Taxodium ascendance is besides just those knees, ascendance. These uh, and you'll see in the picture I'll post. The ascendance uh, is is again a southeastern United States species, uh, and and so is tax, toxic, Taxodium um, disticum. The, the ranges do overlap. But uh, Ascendance is going to have a pressed, see how this is almost fan-like spreading? It's going to have these oppressed, uh, oppressed leaves along the, bran the determinate branches.